It's been a little more than three months since the CSGO beta dev version under app ID 7.10 was hidden from the public. For those who don't know, it's used by the developers to test new and future game updates. Apart from that, the developers also fixed an exploit in the rich present system. Now, if a user has a private profile or hides his game activity, game session data will probably no longer be sent to the system. Therefore, it will not be possible to send a request to the server to pull out the necessary information. This happened because we were able to spy on developers and archive all their activities with the help of a custom bot. By exploiting this vulnerability, we've been monitoring the active porting of CSGO to Source 2 for several months. You can learn more about this in my previous videos, and today, however, I'm going to talk about all the interesting details, leaks and findings that I haven't mentioned before. Max at the microphone again, so let's get right into it. Apart from our span, this exploit was fixed because the development has moved to a much more exposed phase. If we kept seeing the developers' actions, there would be so many obvious leaks that there would be no point in denying or silencing them. And also, they may have started integrating the 7.10 dev version into the main game under app ID 7.30. The same way it works in Dota 2, they don't have a separate dev version and all changes take place in a password protected branch. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but how else can we explain the fact that global updates haven't been released for almost a year? For example, the developers haven't released a Halloween event with ghosts or a New Year's event with snowballs, even though it'll take a day of work and the holiday mode command enabled. And only 34 cosmetic skins came out in 2022, the smallest number in 10 years. Anyways, we'll find out how it works in the nearest future and before this mystery box was shut down, we managed to accumulate a few interesting discoveries. Scope.gg analyzes your game on Faceit and matchmaking to become the best player possible. Recently, they've added a new feature called Pre-Match. It helps to analyze your opponent's behavior even before the game starts. Just paste your Faceit lobby link and check if your opponents usually play aggressive or defensive. Learn their favorite positions, weapons and overall summary of the team and to be ready for the start of the match, keep your eye on a warm-up timer. Learn how to predict enemies' plans and movements by clicking the Link down below. Scope.gg. Feel the game. On September 27, one of the developers was spotted on a map called Dust Test 001. We shouldn't jump to conclusions based on the name, as the map with a similar name called 3 Test 001 has been spotted previously. On both maps were developers who specialize on visual effects and were heavily involved in the development of Source 2 as the engine and the Half-Life Alex as the most beautiful game for VR. So we can assume that dust literally means dust and all sorts of particles in the air, and not map called DE Dust or DE Dust 2. In addition to the graphics dudes, in the time period from September 10 to 30, in the CSGO dev branch for developers, there were a lot of new people involved in directing and animating the game's characters. This is most likely related to the fact that after the transition to Source 2, all player animations will be triggered from a new tool called AnimeGraph, as opposed to the original Source engine where all sequences are triggered directly from the code. In other words, the animators need to move the whole system to a new node-based animation animation software, which is great because it's so much more convenient. And interestingly enough, one of the animators entered several maps in the row. Firstly, it was Dust 2 and then Italy. Based on that, we can assume that he was testing how the animations work on different agents and game factions at once. After seeing gaps in our discoveries, my friend Aqua, the guy who created the bot, decided to recheck all the information we had gathered in 3 months. To his shock, he found out that we hadn't been paying attention to a few people from Valve who were actively sitting in the CSGO developer branch. A little digging into their portfolio revealed that some of them are the creators of the Rubicon physics engine and the AnimeGraph node-based animation system for Source 2. So a few extremely important key Source 2 developers have been doing some things for CSGO on a quite regular basis and we haven't even noticed. In addition, the finalist of the map core competition, which took place a couple of years ago received a set of souvenirs from the CSGO developers at the end of September. The most interesting one is the mouse pad, which has been autographed by numerous CSGO developers. 
I couldn't figure out all of the autographs and I intentionally won't call specific names, but the list includes people who haven't been previously involved in the development of CSGO and whose expertise is closely related to graphics and visuals for games on Source 2, and their portfolio highlights contributions to the creation of Half-Life Alex. In theory, the maps prefixed with S2 that we spotted while spying on the developers may not be full-fledged map remakes, but just small visual upgrades with PBR textures. For those who don't know, PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering, and it mimics the way lights interact with different materials in the real world. These textures are designed to accurately represent the way that light would bounce off and be absorbed by the material in the real world, creating a more realistic and lifelike appearance. PBR materials are a core feature in Source 2, so devs might use these remakes to showcase the difference. Well, in addition to the port to the new engine, the developers are continuing to improve the VACnet anti-cheat. According to the strings from the October 22nd update, they've started to track the players' movement and actions much more intensely than before. In particular, this applies to such atypical and automated moves as B-hop or drastic mouse flicks when hitting the enemy. In other words, this potentially expands the list of dishonest players from just cheaters to all sorts of scripters who use bunny hop or to people with hidden auto-aim assistance. And finally, at the end of October, users discovered that Chinese version of the CSGO has a public live drop feed of cases, sticker capsules and the souvenir kits. So if you happen to be interested in checking it out and maybe compiling some statistics, I'll leave a link to the Reddit post with detailed explanation down below. Make sure to check out my previous video where I talk about a new game based on CSGO and don't forget to support me by subscribing, liking and commenting. Until next time, увидимся!